would you like your business and your life to be a lot more fun, a lot less stressful, and a whole lot more productive? Hi, I'm Small Business Stacy. I'm Digital Dave. Where marketing meets technology. Do you want to sell more, lead with influence, and just live a life where you feel fulfilled and a life of significance? Today, my guest is Bob Berg. Well, let me tell you who I am first. Small Business Stacy here with another episode of Small Business Marketing Success Interviews. And today, my guest is no other than Bob Berg, and he's going to share two simple words that you can use to achieve extraordinary results, both in your business and your personal life. Welcome to the show, Bob. Hello, Stacy. Thank you for having me. Of course. Now, I've, I, I know all about you, Bob, and you've written many books. And I mean, look behind you. you you're a wealth of knowledge, and I want to tap into all your brilliance today. But I probably would get it wrong. So I'm going to have you take a few minutes and share a little bit about yourself. Really just began as a broadcaster, graduated into sales, knew nothing about sales. So I learned about sales and um, got pretty good at it. Um, needed some attitude adjustments along the way and, and to understand that selling was really not about the salesperson and it wasn't even about the product or service, it's about the other person. And once I understood that, that made a, a big difference. So uh, from there, I, I eventually became sales manager of a company, started teaching others what was working for, for me. And as they used to say on Seinfeld, yada, 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 35 years later, here we are. 35 years later, years. wow. Something like that. Yeah, but who's <laughs> counting, right? I'm not. All right. Well, you know, Bob, that's about the professional you, but my audience really wants to know about the real you. So I have some additional questions. Okay. Ice cream or sherbet? Ice cream. Okay. Any particular flavor? I'm a chocolate ice cream person. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll get along really well. <laughs> <laughs> Batman or Superman? I actually go with Superman. Any particular reason? I, he just seems like a nicer guy. <laughs> well, that's what's important when you're uh, when the world's falling to bits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think he gets and the job done pretty well. He too. he definitely gets the job done. That's ultimately what matters. And log cabin or modern home? Oh, mo modern home. All right, with lots of books. Yeah, uh, definitely a library. My my home is basically a library with scattered furniture. A library with scattered, okay. Multi-purpose, I love it. Yeah. All right, let's get into some meat and potatoes. I know my audience is clamoring to know what these two words are that you are a real expert in that can really help them achieve extraordinary success both in their business and personal life. You yeah. wanna tell us what that is? <sighs> You know, Stacy, I was listening to the to you talk about that those two words. I don't know what those two words are. So, um, would you mind sharing them, and I'll <laughs> comment on them and make believe I know. Well, oh, fair enough, and maybe I'm mistaken because there's a hyphen in those two words. Oh, you're the talking two words go are go giver. Oh, okay, I got you. Ha! Very good, very clever. So, what is a go giver? What is a go-giver? Yeah. It, it's simply a person who understands that shifting their focus, and this is really the key, shifting their focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. It's understanding that doing this is, is not only a, a pleasant way of conducting business, it's the most financially profitable way as well. So you can have both. Absolutely. Absolutely. Meaning you can give and get at the same time? Well, you give and receive. And, 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 and that's, you know, and that's a big thing because it, it really begins with the giving. It begins with the focusing on creating value for others. Now, 
for anyone who might think this is a, you know, just some kind of, you know, la la kind of, mm -hmm. oh, just do good. At, no, I, when I speak at, at sales conferences, I'll often ask this question. Uh, how many of you would agree with the following statement? Nobody is going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet. And we all raise our hands because we know that's true. Right. How many of you understand that nobody's going to buy from you because you need the money and would like the sale to happen? We all raise our hands. How many of you agree? Nobody's going to buy from you because you're a really nice person. We all agree. No, they're going to buy from you because they believe that they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And that's the only reason why anyone should buy from you or from me or for anyone else, from anyone else. And what that means is that it's actually in the best interest of the salesperson to place their, their interests aside and focus totally on bringing and communicating immense value to that other person. Hmm. This is yeah, why we say that money is an echo of value. The value must be the focal point. It must be focusing on that other person. Uh, it, when you do that, the money you receive is simply a natural result of the value you've provided. So yes, you give and you receive. It's almost like it's turned on its head because small business owners always think, I need to get more dollars in the door, more, 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 right? It's about me. I need more money in my bank account. And they're never really thinking about giving first right. so that it then you know, comes back to them. And it's not that you don't need the money in your account. Of course you do. You're in business and that has to happen. If the question is, what's the best way to make that happen? What's the best way to create that what we call benevolent context for your success? Is it to go into a presentation focused on yourself and on the money that you want this person to give you? Remember, they're not buying for your reasons, okay? Or is it to discover what the other person needs, wants, desires? And only once you know that, then connect the benefits of, of your product or service with what they need, want, or desire. So it's not that we're saying the money's not important. Of course it is. It's just that the best way to make sure that money comes to you is by first focusing on bringing value to that other person. And understand that value, which is defined as the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder, value is always in the eyes of the beholder. It's not what you believe is of value about your product or service, it's what they do. No, it's really interesting because in my book, Small Business Marketing Made Easy, where I lay out the action system, mm -hmm. it all starts with A, which stands for attention, which is defining your who. And that's kind of what you're saying. It, it's focusing on that who, understanding their pains, their challenges, and delivering a solution for them, right? Exactly, right on, right on. And you know, when you say a system, what is a system? Well, it's the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. So when your students, when your clients, when they follow your system, it's a predictable way to get from point A to point B. Yeah, I always hear a lot of backlash. They'll be like, well, I did something nice for so-and-so and then I never got anything back, so I'm moving on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have to look what that look at what that really means. So when someone says, "Well, but I gave value to others," I did. Now again, let's recall first that value is always in the eyes of the beholder. Mm. So the first thing is, did you give them something of value? Did you provide value to them? Did you communicate value to them that was important to them, or that you find, think is of value? And that's usually, and I'd say 99% of the time, that's really what happens. Someone thinks they're doing, or they're doing a good deed and thinking, oh, the universe should pay me back for that. Well, that's not right. how it works. So, uh, you know, and so, you know, what it means is you find ways to serve others. And before you uh, even have the relationship necessarily where that person's going to listen to your sales presentation, when I say listen to your sales presentation, I mean, be an active participant. Mm -hmm. because you're really listening to them, but you know what I mean. 
uh, before it even gets to the point of a presentation, you need to be able to communicate value to that other person. But it's got to be in such a way that they find it to be of value, not that you think it's of value. So when it comes down to that value, does it have, when you're saying deliver value, is it giving them a gift? Is it dumping content on them? What does value mean? It depends. It can mean, it can be a lot of different things. It might be the attention you first paid that person when you first met that person and made that person feel good about themselves and special about themselves just through the, the questions you asked as you were getting to know them. Okay. It may have been uh, that you were in a conversation where they had a, a question that maybe did relate to what you do and you gave them a sufficient amount of information to help them in some way. You didn't know, you didn't give away the store and you don't have to, but you gave them some really good solid information that helped them. It may be a connection you made with them and for them with someone else. It could be some, uh, uh, you know, some other type of way that you did something that, they felt good about that benefited them. So there isn't one, you know, and it, it's not something that necessarily has to cost money to do. It's not mm -hmm. necessarily a gift or a thing or uh, what, but it could be depending upon the situation. So, you know, that's where it, it really depends on, on what you do and, and uh, how you do it. Well, can you give us an example of how a small business owner could take this concept of giving value mm -hmm. first um, how let's let's take the example of a coffee shop owner. What could they do to be more of what you call a go-giver? Well, you know, I always say that there are five elements of value that that have to do with how we communicate the value to others. And, and to the degree that we can do that with any new prospective customer or client, whether it's through something inbound or whether it's an outbound type of you met with them or met them somewhere, whatever. Um, to the degree that you can communicate one or more of these five elements of value, hopefully all five, from the, the minute you meet them through the, the follow up and follow through and then the sales process, the referral process, you know, everything. That's the degree you take both money or price and competition out of the picture. So this coffee shop owner may meet someone at some charity event or something or some or at the kids ball game or at the PTA meeting or some social function that they happen to be at. And it's asking that person about themselves. You know, let's say they meet someone, let's say this coffee shop owner met someone uh, and the person's name was Gary and they ask Gary what Gary does. And, and Gary says that he sells copying machines, high end copying machines to businesses. And, um, and he says, what do you do? And she says, oh, I have, you know, Oceanside uh, coffee. But instead of now talking about herself and trying to sell him on the coffee, she's going to go back to sort of asking him questions about himself. And these questions, I call these feel-good questions. And they immediate establ immediately establish value and a connection with this person. So she might ask Gary, so this is interesting. You, you're an office products professional. How did you get your start doing that? And this is a question that he's never been asked before, probably. His own family hasn't asked him how he got <laughs> right. started in his business. And yet she is, is letting him know that she finds him special and, and, and interesting and wants to know his story. And you know he's going to love telling, sharing his story. Now the next feel good question she asks, and again, so feel good questions are questions that they're, they're not salesy, they're not prospecty, they're not intrusive, they're not invasive. They simply very quickly establish a connection uh, with the other person. So the second question might be, what do you enjoy most about it? Mm. Okay. And you know, this is so, so different from so many, so much, so many um, teachings, which, which tell us to immediately, you know, find their pain, right? right? You know, reach into their heart and tear it out. Right? right now, they're not ready for that. You know, Right now, just we want them to feel good. We don't want to find their pain. We want to find their joy, right? And, and have them associate that joy with us. And so, you know, we ask him what he enjoys most about what he does. Now, he a answers that question. These are feel good questions, right? I mean, who wouldn't enjoy being asked those? Now comes what I call the one key question that will separate you from everyone else this person's ever met, okay? Mm -hmm. This is not one of the, the feel-good questions. This is its own separate question, and it sounds like this. Uh, Gary, uh, 
you know, I always love connecting good people with other good people. How can I know if someone I'm speaking with is a good prospective customer for you? Oh, wow. Yeah. See, that's value, right? And, and, and Gary said, he hasn't even, he's that probably never been asked that question either. So he says, well, uh, I guess if you're ever in an office and you notice a copying machine and next to that copying machine is a waste paper basket, and that waste paper basket is filled to the rim and overflowing with crumpled up pieces of paper. That's a great sign that copying machine has been breaking down a lot lately. And that would be an excellent prospect for me. And she says, good, that's, that's wonderful to keep in mind. And so boom. And, and that's, that's one conversation where you already added significant value to that person's life. Now, you make sure to get his card. If he asks you for yours, that's fine, but it doesn't even matter. You ask for his card, and the next day, you send a personalized handwritten note to that person, yeah? And it simply says, hi, Gary, uh, thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you at the so-and-so function. Uh, if I can ever refer business your way, I certainly will. And you, make you wanna make sure that on this, on this note, Card. It's, you know, eight and a half by, by three inches. Mm -hmm. It's got your, you know, your, your name is, it's got your um, contact information, plenty of white space to write the note, but it's got your picture so that, that um, they see you, they know who you are. Cause as human beings, we think in pictures, we process information mm -hmm. different ways, but we think in pictures, you write it in blue ink. So it's obvious that it's a handwritten note. Then you put it in a number 10 envelope, hand stamp it, hand address it in blue ink. And, uh, and send it that day. He'll get it that next day and, uh, or send it that same day if he can. He'll get it the next day. He takes it out. He sees your picture. The warm, fuzzy feelings come back and there's a note. But it's not a note with a business card stuffed in there or a coupon or, or you know, come buy my coffee. It's thank you. It was a pleasure meeting you. If I can ever refer business your way, I certainly will. Okay. Now this is just the start. I mean, it's a whole follow-up follow-through system, but I'm just saying when you said, what do you do to bring value to another person? You pay attention to them. You know, you, you, you treat them like a valued person because they are. And you mean you, you don't walk into power. the room and say, Hey baby, want to buy my stuff? <laughs> well, you know, if you did that, I would buy. Okay. Aww, if you were selling thanks, coffee, that I would buy. <laughs> but most of us, we can't get away with that. If I did that, someone would say, get away from me. So, you know, no, that's so, yeah, why yeah. most people actually dread going to these networking events because it's like, I, I just met you. What do you do? Oh, hey, baby, want to buy my and stuff? They feel, and see, nothing here's that you said was any of that. No, and here's the thing. It puts pressure on you to feel as though you've got to come up with the perfect elevator speech, which, by the way, that person couldn't care less about. At this right. Point. Exactly. So, no. But always go in there. What we want to do is move from an I focus or me focus to what we call an other focus. Yeah. Well, there's a reason we have two ears and one of these, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I love, love, love the handwritten note. My audience Absolutely. knows I'm a big proponent of, you know, stop sending a text or just being so impersonal that there's nothing more powerful, in my opinion, than the handwritten note. Exactly. Exactly. All right. So you've sort of laid out a system that a small business owner can follow to provide value. Mm -hmm. So, it, and I love how you, you know, you are systematizing it because it's not just asking one question. You gave a series of questions and then, so the person gets the handwritten note. Should they, does the system just stop then? Oh, no. I mean, I was just giving you one. I was just giving you part, you know, the, that initial part. You want to be able to, you want to be able to follow up with this person now that, the, you know, you've got them on your list. Now create the relationship. When exactly. there's something that they may find to be of interest, you know, send it to them. When you have a connection for them or someone you think would be great for them to meet, make sure you, you know, you send that to them. Um, uh, there's also other, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, writing a little uh, a booklet or having a, a booklet of favorite quotes from the internet, you know, and you can send that with a little note, you know, that just said, thought you might enjoy these or these are some of my favorite quotes. Hope you find these inspirational, blah, 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 whatever. Send them. Um, I love the idea of having a scratch pad or a notepad to send every month or so. So they keep that on their desk. They keep that by their phone. Um, you know, there are all sorts of great things we can do, but the best is to always try to find ways of connecting those good people with other good people. 
And when you uh, do that, you just you listed out that. so many great ideas. And as we're recording this, we're kind we're coming into the holiday season. And so small business owners are thinking, oh, well, well, I've just send a holiday card, maybe a gift, and I've done my good deed for the year, right? That's Priya, probably not really the what least, you're talking about. No, not at all. In, in, in fact, you know something? They're getting a ton of holiday cards. Uh, almost, I mean, you can if you want, but don't even bother. <laughs> yeah. You know, because it, it's, yeah. It is, it is what it is and you know, it's, it's, it's fine to do that, but no, don't, don't even consider that part of, part of your marketing plan. If you wanna do it because it's just a nice thing to do, fine. Uh, but they're getting tons of them. And uh, so yours doesn't stand out. What stands out is that personalized note card. What stands out is that, that phone call. What stands out is paying attention to them as a human being. Uh, you know, and those are the things you wanna do when you first, now, um, you may have uh, something you've put together, five ways to um, prepare your coffee at home to get the best taste and, and when to not drink coffee or something like that. You put out a special report and you can just email that person if it's in a form of a report and just said, I'd put this together. Uh, I, hope you, uh, I hope you enjoy it or hope to, you find it helpful. You know, so that, should, that reminds them again that you're a coffee person, but you're not there's nothing in there about coming into the store for coffee. It's five ways to enjoy your coffee at home. So again, you're providing some information to them. You're also showing your expertise and mm -hmm. your competence and so forth. Uh, you know, those are the things you can do. Now, can you have something in the back with a little ad about your store and about, of course, that, you know, that's fine. But you generally, you basically want to make it about them. And to the degree you do that, that's the degree that they become more attracted to you and what you do. It's very true because um, I am constantly dripping on people in my funnel. You know, they may have opted in to get a free marketing plan or something mm -hmm. like that. They want tips to grow their small business. They're not mm -hmm. really ready to buy. And so my motto is people buy when they're ready to buy, not when you're ready to sell no. to them. Right. Exactly. So just like you're saying, if I find a piece of content or something helpful, I'll send that to them. Mm -hmm. And it could easily be even a year later, but they mm -hmm. come back to me and they're like, Stacy, I could only work with you because sure. you've just, you've, you've been there with me all along, giving me helpful tips. You've, you've never been pressuring me to buy from you. And so I think, you know, small business owners, they're just so eager to make the sale today. They need yeah. to take more of a longer term view and their brand ambassadors will ultimately become their sales machine. Yeah. And, and, and also, you know, it can, it's, uh, and, and if it takes a year, it takes a year. It wasn't going to take less because you wanted it to take less, but it can also take a week. Yeah. And it can also take six months or three months or three weeks or three days. You don't know. That's why you want to constantly be filling your funnel because at various times people are going to come out of that funnel, but it's going to be, as you said, when they're ready to buy, not when you are ready to sell. Now let's yeah. go back to your copy person again. Your copy person could have a Facebook live every week mm -hmm. where it's not about the coffee. It's about the community. Mm. And this person interviews different business people in the community. But what she does is she interviews these people at her coffee shop. And it's, you know, and, and the name of the program might even be, it's not about the coffee, for, yeah. you know, or something like that. Or it could be something as simple as uh, it's your local business or something like that. And there's a feature, but it's always that person. And there's the warm background and there's everything in there that paints the picture of how nice the coffee shop is. But it's basically your coffee shop owner talking with someone from the community. And there's all sorts of people in the background too that give it a nice feel that this is where people are. So in other words, but she's not plugging her coffee place. Right. Okay, other than coming from, you know, so-and-so, so-and-so. She could even call it, you could even call it coffee with Jeanette or coffee with Dave, uh, coffee with Dave and friends or something like that. And, and, and Dave is the owner and the friend is the person being interviewed, you know, however you do it. But I'm just saying with a little bit of imagination, you can build a whole community around that. And again, you're just providing value to people because it's about how that person can grow in business through, you know, the advice of this, this person. I love it. 
And I just want a message to my small business community. Don't say, oh, well, I'm not a coffee shop. This right. Won't this has work nothing to do with, this is not about the coffee. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Find a way to, to, to make it pertinent to what you do. And again, uh, you know, when you do this community, this thing in the community, assuming you're community based and that's where your customers are, just be that community leader, be that person who brings the community together through your Facebook Live and the discussion page and get people involved and make people feel good about themselves and make people feel like they're part of it. And you'll see what happens. I love this. We've been talking a lot about the business side of things, but you know, I know that you're both, you, the go-giver also applies to your personal life. So can you elaborate a little bit on that of how do we bring this into our own personal life to get more abundance and significance? Well, in the book, we had a uh, John David Mann, my co-author, and I, we also put a subplot in there because, you know, it's a business book and the, the publisher is a business publisher, but we put a subplot in there with Joe and Susan, the husband and wife, and how, you know, things were a little rocky for them because they were basically trying to have a 50-50 relationship. And as Pindar, the main mentor in the story, explained to Joe, great relationships, whether it's business or family, are not 50-50. They're simply 100. And if you really focus on bringing immense value to that other person, that other person is going to want to bring that back and give that 100% to you. And, um, and, you know, when you do that, now magical things start to happen. It's really not magical. It's actually very logical. But it seems magical because most other people don't have that. So we can have it all. We can have this abundance in our personal life and our business life. And when you bring it all together, you should. yeah, there's no reason not to. Great. Yeah. So then where does a small business owner start? If they get your whole philosophy of being a go-giver, you can have this abundance. Where do they start? They start with, well, like we do with Joe in the story, when he met Pindar, Pindar gave him, was going to give him these five laws of stratospheric success, as we call them, laws of okay. value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity. But as he said to Joe, you've got to apply each one that day. You know, it's wow. not a matter of thinking about why it will work or why it won't work or what if this or what if that. It's a matter of just doing it. And I mean, these are tried and true principles. None of them are new. I mean, you know. John and I didn't make these up. We may, have given, <laughs> we may have put them in a story form and, and given them certain names, but these are principles that people have been using since time immemorial to build fantastic businesses. And um, so just start applying them. I mean, it's really not, uh, you know, it's not a whole lot more complicated than that. It is. It's what makes small business great. It is what makes small business great. Well, Bob, we're running up against the clock. Any last parting words you can give my small business community? You know, I, I would say it's a, a lesson I, I learned. Remember, I was telling you when I first got into sales and I, you know, I was, I, as I began to learn sales, I got pretty good at it. But I certainly, after a couple of years, I was nowhere near where I should have been. And I remember one day coming back to the office after really blowing a sale and I was looking dejected and I was ticked at myself and and at the world. And I remember one of the, the much older um, people there. And again, this is almost 40 years ago. So when I say much older, it's probably my age now, <laughs> you know, decrepit old guy. <laughs> uh, but uh, he said, and I think he saw me as sort of Joe in the, who I would, we would later write about in the story, you know, the guy with a lot of potential, but not, not realizing it. And he said to me, can I give you some advice? And I said, sure, please do. And he said, you know, he said, Berg, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. Wow. Your target is serving others. Now, when you hit the target, he said, you'll get a reward. And that reward will come in the form of money. And you can do with that money whatever you choose. But never forget, he said, the money is simply the reward for hitting the target. It ain't the target itself. Your target is serving others others. And I think when we keep that in mind, okay, that the target is serving others, now we're nine steps ahead of the game in a 10-step game. Awesome. To me, the message was do good, be good, get good. <laughs> Very, and that was goodly said. 
Well, thank you, Bob. So I know my audience is going to want to get a copy of your book and reach out, possibly learn more about you and the, the services that you provide. How can people get in touch with you? Uh, they can go to thegogiver.com or they can go to berg.com. Uh, and if interested, we have a program coming up, a live program in January uh, 2020 called Endless Referrals, The Go-Giver Way. It's a two-day wow. event, and they can go to endlessreferrals.com. Endless referrals, that's a good thing. <laughs> Great. Thank, Thank you, you, Bob, for coming on the show today, sharing your brilliance, giving some real actionable strategies of how any small business owner can be a go-giver and therefore have a life of abundance and prosperity. Hey, Thank everybody. You. I appreciate you. This is Small Business Stacy, your small biz marketing specialist, here to help you get your marketing into action and help you become a small biz marketing whiz. Bye-bye. This podcast was brought to you by Small Business Stacy, the small biz marketing specialist. Want to know the six simple steps that will double, even triple your business in the next 30 days? Go to smallbizmarketingspecialist.com forward slash transform and finally achieve the successful and profitable business you always knew you'd have. That's smallbizmarketingspecialist.com forward slash transform.